All right, but does. Oh, <laughs> I should have done the training. Um, oh, okay. Well, oh, see, okay. Yeah, there's two two laser pointers. <laughs> Is that better? Can everyone hear me? Yes, just much yeah, better. Yeah, much better. Okay. I don't know what's going on with that, Michael. But thank you. So right. much. Sorry about that. Okay. No, that's fine. All right. So essentially, I was just talking about getting rejected from talking to you at DEF CON. So we don't even need the people to listen to that. Um, all right. So what this talk is, is all about. Um, all right, let's see. Yeah, okay, can we move to the next slide, please? And all right, so essentially, I've got a brain that is always trying to consume as much as I possibly can. Um, all the time. Um, and sometimes I just don't have the hours in the day to, to actually do everything that I want to do. Um, and this is especially true. So when I go on Twitter and I'm on Twitter, as, as, as the introduction said, pretty much all the time, I'm, I'm pretty much addicted to it. I follow basically the cleverest people in the entire world, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, and some of them drop some, information about stuff that they're working on or something that that they find interesting um all the time and and, and i just put it into bookmarks because i just really can't get to it um and so i have and I, I i checked this out this morning um over 500 bookmarks sitting waiting for me to to address them and i have at a 10 yesterday <laughs> since since I created the slide. So it, it's it's a huge issue. Um but it's 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 a good one to have. And I think that's probably what the title what the whole subject of this talk is all about. Um, um okay, so to produce this talk uh, just um behind the scenes I, I used a piece of software called Dewey. Um, it's a way of, of arranging bookmarks. I know that if you pay money to Twitter each month, uh, you can do the same thing. Um, I have a problem with paying money to Twitter each month, um, especially since the Stewie program is free. Um, I have no idea anything about the organization. For all I know, my bookmarks are being looked at by some sort of weird government of some sorts. Or some company and they're selling it so that whenever I jump onto Twitter, it advertises something that makes sense to me, which doesn't seem to be the case. But um, that's maybe why they're, they're happy to to do something for free. Who knows? Anyway, so I, I, I quickly got hold of this app uh, just so that I could arrange my bookmarks and have a look and see exactly what, what uh, was available to me. Um, and for the first time, I actually jumped back into like bookmarks that I started with about uh, two or something years ago. Um, there's actually good stuff in there. Um, so uh, next slide, please. So we're going to take a bit of a, a look through these. Uh, I've skipped some bookmarks because they just don't really make sense to the great pu uh, public. Um, and yeah, let's let's jump in. So this this is like one of my oldest ones, uh, February 27, 2019. So it's it's a good what two and a half years old. Um, and yeah, comes comes from uh, K Katie McCaffrey. Uh, and 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 what they were talking about here is is running an experiment where instead of using Word um, and and using track changes in Word and comments and stuff, uh, they decided to to abandon Word altogether um, and just uh, make their documents in a way that they, that they could uh, store it in GitHub. Um, so any changes that you made to a document. Uh, once you had committed those changes, you put like a change uh, reason. Um, and so anyone that's that's following up on your documents can just go through essentially the change uh, change log um, and see exactly what uh, 
what 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 those changes were, um, which is an interesting way of 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 doing things. And um, the, the reason why I'm showing you these is is a lot of these were just me thinking, well, how can we do things better? So as 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 my introduction said, um, I'm a GRC consultant, uh, but I also consider myself to be a GRC hacker. Um, and so I'm always trying to see how can we hack the, the, the processes that we're doing. Um, so instead of just accepting the fact that like, you know, reports are done with Word, what is better? What what can we do? What's 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 a better way of, of us doing things? Um, and this one just really appealed to me. So should you do this? Should you use Word? Who knows? Um, up to you. But at least it's something that that you should be thinking about. Um, I don't know if if you want, uh, and that's that's what these bookmarks are all about. It's like it's just stuff for me to think about, and maybe you can think about it as well and, and get something out of it. Um, so yeah, that's that's one thing. If you're looking at me for answers in this in this talk, I'm sorry, I don't have answers. These are all just ways of of making me think and making me question. Um, all right, next slide, please. Okay, so it wouldn't be complete without uh, a tweet from from Dominic White, uh, also known as Singe, uh, who's one of the smartest people that I've ever had the privilege of of meeting. Um, him and I were both originally from uh, Johannesburg, um, so we used to kind of move around in in different in, sorry in the same circles, um, and and. And, and think together and so I, I consider him to be one of one of the smartest guys that I know and then Shol uh, who he's who he's quoting here is also um, fits into into that category uh, so yeah businesses can get away with being technically bankrupt uh, in terms of security debt uh, because it isn't something that is measured um, yeah, I, I just love the idea of of, of security debt. Um, again, not something that I that I can can claim to to know everything about, and certainly not something I can do in a talk that's supposed to be fifteen minutes long. Um, but it's something that I like to think about the idea that uh, if you take shortcuts when when you're developing new systems um, or new services or anything to to that effect. Uh, it's it's going to to cost you down the line, um, and that's that's just something to think about uh, in terms of security. Uh, and and when you're working with organisations and you like look at them and say, listen, surely when you were putting the solution together, patching was something that you considered, and they're like, well, no, not really. And it's like, well, okay, well, you're going to have to consider it now, and it's going to be more difficult for you to consider it now. And they're like well, we, we just can't afford the time. And it's like, well, then in that case, you're pretty much technically bankrupt. And um, it, it's not a, a security issue. It's, it's, it's a development issue. You should have done it right at the beginning. Um, and, and I love that, that, that kind of concept of thinking of it in, in terms of, of debts, where if you start it now um, and do it now, it'll be a good thing. But if you do it in the future, you're going to not only be paying the debt, but the interest on on, on top of that. Um, so yeah, that's this was this was uh, an interesting um, an interesting tweet. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this this is one that I found uh, quite interesting, uh, just basically because uh, it's. Uh, Quotes. Uh, w w one of the people that that um, I really really like, um, and uh, so so Dr. Uh, Nicole uh, uh, Forsgren, um, who is who's who's basically written a book um, about uh, e essentially DevOps, um, in including ways that 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 she, she investigated on on how. Um, Companies do it successfully. Uh, she's like basically the one person that that's scientifically tested whether De DevOps is a good idea and come out with with an idea that it is. Um, now I disagree with her on 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 this one very specific point um, about the fact that 
Um, she talks about maturity models, and I think her definition of maturity models is different to mine. So essentially what she's talking about here is the idea of something like a PCI, where, where you, you're not kind of working out what, what you should be doing based on, on your own environment, but literally based on, on a set of best practices. Um, and I actually really like PCI um, and I like the idea of, of the fact that you should use best practices um, because in a lot of organization, that's, that's really what all you've got, um, you know, and, and I probably shouldn't say best practices. I should probably say good practices because a lot of organizations, you know, th that is the, the, the minimum that you should be doing is, um, is actually what they do. Um, and, and so I, I guess I kind of agree with this, that, that you, you should customize your controls for your organization, but a lot of organizations don't even have the minimum. <laughs> so, um, so this is something that, that I'd like to think about, like to, to, to work out more and then, um, be able to, to, to come up with, with, with a good solution, um, to, to what organizations should do. Um, but yeah, so, so this is one that I thought I'll, I'll just pull out and highlight. Um, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so going from a tweet about uh, doc, uh, Dr. Forsgren to a tweet by Dr. Forsgren about, um, about someone else. Um, so this is um, from uh, Camille uh, Fournier. Um, and it's it's about uh, it says if the most insightful thing that you can say about metrics and measures um, is that people will gain uh, game them, uh, you don't have anything insightful to to add to the conversation. So we know that we we know that people will try and game um, these things. Um, doesn't mean that you should just abandon them and go with you know gut feel or or something. You should lean more into to to collect good good information. Um, and, and absolutely. Uh, so, um, I think, um, if, if, uh, which continues this idea. So, 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 uh, uh, so, so, uh, Dr. Forsgren uh, carries on and says, uh, metrics will be used against people because trust me, lack of metrics is also used against people. Um, and the idea being that that if you uh, is 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 that metrics can be used against uh, certain uh, certain types of people, um, and and absolutely it can, and especially when when you look at at AI or ML, uh, so so you know artificial intelligence, which is or machine learning, which which is based on. Um, the past essentially um and you'll see that a lot of them have have issues um the reason why they have issues is because the source material is 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 not great to start with um and the idea being hang on a sec but you know even though it's a bad thing doesn't mean that we should stop there or ignore it and just go with gut feel because gut feel is probably based on the same data the same information um as 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 it has been so yeah, that's 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 an issue. Um, but we should actually work harder to get that source information better. We should work harder to understand what what the stuff is that we're looking at. Um, don't abandon it just because it doesn't make sense to you. Work harder, um, and I think that's that's what I get out of out of this particular tweet. Um, next slide, please. Um, okay, this this is just one uh, that I just thought I'll, I'll throw in. So this is from uh, Rachel Toback, uh, who is um, one of the best uh, social engineers uh, out there um, and has competed many times at the Social Engineering Village. Um, and I just thought this was, was a good one because it kind of shows how um, if you look at things more deeply, um, they make a lot more sense. So if you look at the laziness of the of, of information security, we always say, listen, don't click on links in emails, um, which 
is actually not helpful advice at all. Um, I always think of of um, kind of a Seinfeld explaining that uh, to 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 Jerry and, and and him coming back and saying, "But that's what emails are for." Like literally, like what half the point of an email is you send send something to someone so they can click on a link and carry on th- their daily business it doesn't make sense to to say something that's just kind of glib don't click on links email um you know th- that person was compromised because like what the hell were they thinking they should have just not clicked on the link um but th- this takes it one step further and has a look at at exactly what is going on with with uh Kind of spam emails, and and what she's got here is uh, is is a principle uh, created uh, by um, someone called uh, name I'm going to try and pronounce uh, Robert uh, Cialdini, um, and that's a principle of persuasion. But like, okay, now now we're looking at 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 the philosophy behind emails. So not just um, you know don't click on links in emails, but hang on a sec, is this email trying to increase the amount of urgency that I need to do. And if it is, do I need to actually be as urgent as the email says that I should? So it's like, okay, if you don't contact us within the next 24 hours, something bad's going to happen to your account. Well, wait a minute. Someone is trying to cause me to bypass my thinking, to to try and be quick and rash. Why are they doing this? What is what is why is it in their best interest? Does it make sense that my bank would would give me a certain amount of time to respond to something? If not, hang on. So maybe someone's trying to con me and trying to bypass my actual way of thinking. Um, this to me is is so much better advice than don't click on links and emails. It's kind of it understand why someone's doing something while they're talking to you in a certain way. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this one I'm getting close to 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 breaking the rules about spot language. There's no swearing in this, but it's 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 close. So this is a risk matrix which I thought was was quite cute. Um, it's the Australian risk matrix. So um, if if anyone is interested in knowing how how risks uh, work. Um, you, you, you basically take the likelihood of something happening and you take the consequences to you, uh, kind of times them together uh, in, or add them together or times them together and you come up with, with, with a number. Um, and that's, that's how much risk there is in something happening. Um, so, yeah, so in, in Australia, you've got a chance of uh, something that's either nah, or yeah, nah, or yeah, or nah, yeah or dead set um and that's that's the likelihood of something happening and then of course your consequences is lower than a lizard's don't be a souk uh she'll be apples or fair dinkum or rooted and then basically uh either something will be she'll be right um or fuck <laughs> so th- th- those are your different ones um have i seen this used in 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 business uh no actually i haven't um but i really like this this one um and then the same same chap uh came out with um he's actually from britain um and he came out with the british one which is on the next slide please and here's the uk one so um yeah, so so their chances are once in a blue moon, uh, not likely, on occasion, a fair chance, and then momentarily, which is like the opposite uh, to to what the US uses as momentarily. Um, and then your consequences are a trifle, a piffle, a hoo-ha, jagged, or royally beeped. Um, and then, of course, yeah, you, you can see the different ones there. So like biscuits or pop the kettle on, um, and then it gets worse. It's like bloody hell and then bugger. And then like the worst possible one is like bugger. We better pop the kettle on. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's your five by five risk matrix for the UK. Um, I think in the interest of time and also because I don't know if it's technically possible, uh, can we skip the next slide and go on to the one after that one, please? That's um yeah this one was was just a bit of fun um 
but also um I, I, I like the the quote at the top there when someone sacrifices the main feature to ship on time um yeah a big part of 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 uh, devops um and and you'll see a lot of these things are are, are concerned with with the idea of devops and and all of that because i think that uh processes um and is is something that that it has totally skipped over um in 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 previous years and we've done all the worst possible processes the worst possible ways of developing things the worst possible of everything um and manufacturing uh was like that uh but they were like that a good 60 70 years ago um and they've worked really really hard to to improve things come up with all the best ways of doing things um and we totally ignored that we just thought we were better than them we just decided that that we'll do things um in in our own way and it's a problem and i think now we're, we're actually starting to to understand that hang on these guys actually spent a lot of time doing the right thing um, and we can learn from them. Um, and, and so like the, so I like to think, um, that a lot of this, uh, is, has been, has been worked out uh, for us. Um, and yeah, this, this is exactly what DevOps is all about. Actually. Um, the, the, the idea that, that, um, you need to ship something on time and that is the biggest, most important thing that's that, that you can do. But in reality, <laughs> what, the whole point of it is to get a good working system um and 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 that's what you should be working to towards um so i just really liked like the well i like the picture because it really doesn't make sense but i also like the quote that they've got at the top um next slide please um yeah this this is a a fun one um a, a, about consulting um so it says yeah at gm if you see a snake the first thing you do is hire a consultant on snakes and then you get a committee together on snakes and then you discuss it for a few years um and then the most likely course of action is nothing because you know if the snake hasn't bit anyone yet then probably won't be a problem um and then so you just leave him to to crawl around on the factory floor um better way to do things is build an environment where the first guy who sees a snake kills it or not necessarily kills it, but so um, I, yeah, I, I just really um working as 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 someone as as a consultant uh, for so many years, this is absolutely uh what I see in a lot of organizations. And as a consultant, I'm not complaining because this pretty much is 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 what puts uh, food into to to my kids' mouths um, because uh, the, the amount of times that I've been hired by an organisation because they just didn't want to um, you know look at look at an issue um, and deal with it they rather bring consultants in to to tell them hey listen you have an issue and then they still do nothing about it um, is is crazy um, I, I I guess if if you're in an organisation. The best thing that you can do is hang on what is practical what can we do let's let's get this thing sorted out as opposed to you know let's get consultants in and then get a committee together and then put this together and blah 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 at the end of the day are you actually solving what what you saw what you set out to solve um well hopefully um and if you're not uh then you probably need to to take a, a deeper look at, at the work that you're actually doing uh next slide please Okay, this comes from uh, Go See the Dog, also someone really smart and someone I enjoy following. Um, the, 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 this, was, this was quite an interesting one. Uh, again, um, so what they said here is Google says their data shows S SM. Okay, this is not even, uh, uh, you know, application driven um, two factor authentication. This is SMS based two factor authentication. 99% effective against bulk phishing. So that's pretty good figures actually. Um, and then 100% effective against credential stuffing. So what this is saying essentially is 
uh, multi-factor authentication can can help you out um, against against uh, you know people trying to attack uh, your authentication, which is great information in the first place. But hang on a sec. Um, it also, if you think about it. Um, means that your phishing emails that you're sending out and spending a lot of time doing, they're good, they're effective. I wouldn't say stop doing that, but also be aware that, you know, if you're just doing that and you all you're really showing is is that there's an issue, you're not really fixing it. Whereas with, um, you know, if you, if you actually have multi-factor authentication, you're actually fixing the issue. Um, so sometimes it's it's good to to actually look practically at, at what there is and what you should be doing. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so so this is just to uh, just to show you an example of of what there is in my bookmarks. This is uh, just a picture of a control that absolutely um, can be bypassed easily, and you can see that in the practical, in in the real world, but you can't really see that um, in 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 RT. Sometimes we just put things in place without understanding them. Um, the reason why I've actually bookmarked this, um, if you have a look at the next slide, please, um, is because it comes from uh, Swift on security. If you don't follow them, you absolutely should be. Um, they just said reply with security memes, and and this this whole kind of Twitter threads is absolutely packed full of lots of fun and games, um, and and so I bookmarked it in case I ever needed to use it in a presentation, which I did, and here it is. Um, next slide, please. I'm running very low on time here, so we're just going to go through the next few quite quickly, and I think they are all slides that we can get through quite quickly. Uh, so this is uh, just a picture of when Kubernetes goes wrong, just lots of fun and games. Um, I just love uh, Kubernetes kind of visual puns. Uh, next one, next slide, please. This is just to show you that my bookmarks are not all just information security and process driven and very serious topics and stuff. Some of them are just quite crazy. Um, so this is just a way of, of making it look like you have a head in a jar. Um, for, for, for Halloween time, it'll be probably to, to put on your desk uh, to, to get the rest of the IT team to take you seriously. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Okay, this this is actually a really interesting story, which I had, if I had more time, I would jump into. It's just basically the whole idea of how processes are broken. Um, if you send an email to to this organization, it gets sent off to um, a, an email address that, that belongs to a person. So this is if you unsubscribe from the email list, it actually goes to a single person that works at the organization, left the organization, some other IT team has, have picked it up, it goes to them, they, they, they do their research as to whether the person is supposed to be on the list or not, and then that goes into an Excel spreadsheet, which then gets emailed to someone else who then checks it against the database, manually sends it back, logs a call, goes to a third person, et cetera, et cetera. It's a beautiful way of showing just how broken organizations can be. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a, a document that shows that that, that I kept because it's got a security a cyber security style guide, which I think is really something good to use. Uh, next slide, please. Recipe on how to make the best bread, and I have tried it, and it is the best bread. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so, next slide, please. Vendor documentation go, uh, can, can definitely be not all that very useful. Um, and, and that's what the slide is showing. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is just good advice, um, I think. Uh, you know, always be thinking about what your customer wants, what, what's, what they're trying to do, um, how do you fit into their processes. Um, and yeah, just remember customer doesn't want to call the inch draw, they want to call it inch hole. Um, I think that's, that's absolutely good. Um, and, and something that I, I consider every single time. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh next slide, please. Let me, like let me check if there's technical issues. 
Yeah, it's it's absolutely fine. Um, the next couple of slides are are, are not all that um, not all that important. Um, one thing I, I can leave you with, I guess, uh, the last slide that I just had there was like, even though I've got so much stuff and and um, it's also probably good just to 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 keep uh, some of the, the rest of the slides are just basically just fun and games. And, and just, uh, I, I think the one thing I just wanted to let you know there is just keep a, um, yeah, just just basically you know keep a sense of humor about you life is always serious especially in the industry that we're in but also you should just sometimes go outside have fun uh take a break relax um and and let your mind just take a break itself um really the kind of of uh book that that leads to, to questions um is just a, a few, a bunch of things that like I found quite interesting once upon a time. Um, I guess uh, the, if there's any takeaways, uh, yeah, besides the fact that you should always, you know, relax and take life easy from time to time, but also, uh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff on Twitter. There's a lot of smart people out there. Um, and I highly recommend that, that you, that you take a look around and, and see. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, people, because pe people are, are real people, they don't only talk tech, they talk about their lives, they talk about how they do things. And sometimes that can be even uh, very useful um, and you can learn a lot from that. So that's pretty much the takeaways. Um, yeah, thank, thank you all very much. If there are any questions or anything that you'd want to discuss further about any of my slides, um, please please let me know. Um, one thing I'm going to try and do is, is get hold of, of all the different tweets that I actually collected up.